Hi, this is where I live. Including me, there are six occupants in this house. Oh, um, welcome to my A Day in a Life vlog. I'm running a little late, so keep up, I'll catch you up along the way. Alright, let's head upstairs. During this time, Jack and Kimberly usually leave for school. A bus comes by and picks them up. The whole family waves them off. I don't know why we're doing this. It's such a huge production. Mum and Keegan stands and wait by the porch in front of the door, leaving no room for me. So I go upstairs and wait from the attic window. The window has been stuck for years, so fingerprints on the glass will suffice. These are old prints. Here are last week's prints. Now I'm gonna leave a fresh set of prints here, here, here. If you have a UV light, my prints kinda glow. Cool stuff, right? Alright, bus is here. Pesky kids. Now, we have a few hours to get stuff done before they return. Let's go, let's go! So, in the morning, our team is warm. Everyone gets wet. Mom will start off with laundry. With Keegan strapped to her bag, she patrols each room looting dirty laundry. I follow around behind her to make sure no sneaky stinking sock gets left behind. This part, Keegan is usually very silent. He just hangs behind Mom, watery eye and stays super still. Keegan is the only one who can see me. Babies are weird. Alright, Mom's moving. Let's go! This is Mom's room. It's usually very clean. Mom and Keegan snores here. Keegan on the crib and Mom on the fluffy square fridge. Keegan's toys are lying around. Mom's books on the shelf, alarm clock, dressing table, a cold bowl. She's leaving. Let's go. This is Jack's room. Everything is everywhere. Clothes on the bookshelf, books on the bed, and a pillow in the rubbish bin. This dude deserves a medal. Jack the off this year. Puberty time. It's gonna be a hairy year. He looks and speaks like a goth, but acts like a sloth. Mom spends the most time in this room. This is a piece. I'm suspecting it's a six-day-old stale radioactive molecule. Right under a huge pile of Japanese literature. If mom misses it and leaves the room, then it falls to me to make sure she doubles back. Jack consumes an incredible amount of Japanese literature books. These are written in series and he waits for them to be published every week. That's spoken a few titles. Um, here is one. It says Naruto. It's probably a book about villagers and wild animals, fox and octopus and stuff. Hmm. This one says One Piece. Judging from the picture, it's probably about sailing in rows of men at sea and scantily clothed girls with huge jugs. He is studious that day. One day, when the god has slaughtered all over, he might be a professor. Mom's leaving. As expected, she missed the radioactive one clock. Hmm, let's see. There is a guitar firmly rooted on the guitar stand. If it falls and lands strummingly on the loin cloth, I'm sure Mom would get hit. This is the fun part. Okay, this is the fun And Keegan cries. Not sure why he does it, no one tells him to do it, but he does it anyway. Those cute chubby chicks get away with murder. Mom's doubling back. She sees the guitar and picks the white cloth. Mission was a success. Now, Kimberly's room. Here we go. Kimberly is not your usual seven-year-old. She sees things. She has a friend, she said. Alright, let's get back. So, I'm a the guys. No one sees me, really. Only Keegan sees me. But once he speaks his first word, he will lose the sight, and he will no longer be able to see me. Kimberly has a friend that no one can see. Not even me. Not even cute little Keegan. And that is creepy. Creepy Kimmy. This room is neat. Nothing is out of place. Out of a thousand toys, Creepy Kimmy only plays with this tree. A doll named Gretchen, a wooden alphabet board with yes, no, and all the numbers carved on it. I guess it helps her learn the alphabet. She is at that age. Lastly, a book or a journal. She always scribbles stuff on it, but the pages never run out. Weird. Except for the supernatural stench, it's almost as neat as mum's room. Mum's done. We're heading down now. 
Mom will leave Keegan in the crib while she washes the clothes, so I'm tasked to keep an eye on him. He usually just plays with his rattle. Keegan's easy enough to cheer, or make some funny faces and cracks him right up. Ever wonder why babies giggle randomly looking at nothing but air? It's probably one of us. You parents better step up. Hmm, the rattle looks loose. Oh no, Keegan managed to remove the screw from the rattle. Shit, 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 calm down. Calm down, it's only Keegan. He's still new. If he dies, he won't be missed much. But if he dies here, there will be two poltergeists. No, not happening. Having a job is important in this economy. Covid, stimulus checks, inflation, recession. Now Keegan wants my job. Oh, so not happening. Hmm, I'ma rock his crib and see if he drops it. No, all right. What? How? His stubby paws won't let go of the screw. It's like taking candy from a baby. They just won't let go. We need to toss! Wait here. You watch Keegan. I'm gonna throw that old portrait towards the crib. Mom should come around. Desperate times trumps trash or treasure or whatever the saying is. More trash than treasure really. It's such an old thing to dusty. We have Polaroid now. It's waiting. Alright, here goes nothing. nothing. And he cries again. As promised, warning is warning. Wait, is he trying to move the screw while crying? Wait, stop, stop. Keegan, do not put that in your mouth. This is an emergency. I'm activating the toss Oh, I hear mom. Phew. Once again, I saved the day. I made a mess, but I saved the day. Mom swaddled Keegan, wrapping him up like a burrito. Now, he's sleeping. She is done with the laundry as well. Mom will hang clothes, water the weeds, and come back for a nap. I'm gonna take a nap as well. Into the foyer, under the stairs, open the cupboard, into the shadow. Here we go. See you soon, guys. I'm up. It's late noon now. I can hear them. The kids are back from school. It's pretty much free and easy now. Mom will prep dinner with Keegan hanging on her like a koala. The other two, well, let's see. Jack is in his room. Doors always close and I can't walk through walls, so we'll have to knock. Hey Jack, what's up? Haha, <laughs> he can't see me. Okay, let's start soon. He just sits there reading with his headphones on. I can literally feel the passage of time flowing through me. It's boring. Since he likes to read, I'll recommend some books. Let's see. We have Hairless Potter and the Prisoner of Alakazam. I'll recommend this. He's looking at us, he's looking at us, and he's back at his Japanese literature. Hmm, he must have homework. The window is open. The neighbor's dog, Mr. Sausage, looks hungry. So, homework, window, sausage dog, equals lift off. Launching homework to neighbor's dog in 3, 2, 1, and we have lift off. And landing, and grounding, and munching. Ooh, that happened way too fast. Wait, wait, Jack ran out. I think he's going to wrestle the skinny little sausage of the dog. I can only imagine his teacher's face when he tells him the dog is homework. I wish I could be there. Too bad I can't leave the compound. I'm sensitive to the sun, moon, and rain, you see. I'm, I'm somewhat like a houseplant. Let's see what creepy kid is up to. Door wide open as usual. Convenient to end. Just sitting on the floor poking on her alphabet board. Wait, is she talking to her friend? Kimmy is asking, what is your name? I don't hear any replies, but Kimmy's finger on the board is spelling out G-R-E-T-C Gretchen. So her friends share the same name as a dog? What a weird coincidence. Kimberly is asking again, are you here? So her fingers move to yes, but isn't it obvious? I mean, if it isn't here, how can it answer no? Not to mention freezing breath in the middle of the afternoon in summer? Kimberly asks again, Do you want to come out and play? And yes again, 
Wow, lucky day. Finally, we get to meet Kimberly's elusive friend. Kimberly seems to be doing some prep work. Summoning candles. Sort pentagram. Neat stuff. Those days, we use this to catch up with family that lives across the country. Ah, oh, she's putting the salt wrong. Uh, okay, she fixed it. Kimmy puts Gretchen, the doll, in the middle and proceeds to light candle. Oh, so Gretchen is in the doll. No wonder its eyes looks gleaming lively. Met a similar doll named Chucky once. Vulgar fellow, never liked him, has anger management issues. Alright, looks like summoning has begun. Lights are dimming. Winds howl. Doors creaking. Meh, low level stuff. Those days, when we make long distance call, the whole ceiling would fly off. Things are levitating, and the journal... It flipped open to a specific empty page. That's creepy. Looks like it's about done. Ah, oh, that's the dinner bell. Mom's done with cooking, time for dinner. The summoning ended up being interrupted. Now everything is everywhere. It's like Jack's room. Ugh. And again, no Gretchen. I really feel that Kimberly is making this up. Makes sense, you know. Me the child always wants more than you. Let's head down. I smell something roasted, something baked. Yes, I was right. Roasted beef. It smells sweet and steamy, hot, savory baked potato. And cold green thing. I personally feel if we eat these green things, we are skipping a step. Steps are cows eat greens, humans eat cows, humans produce brown goo, green stuff eats brown goo. There should be some distance between humans and brown goo. If we eat greens, that distance has been cut short. The table is set for four. As usual, they missed me out. As a valuable member of the family, I'm always ignored. Ugh, now I know how Kimberly feels. I'm going to set my own table. Let's open the cupboard. Get the fork, get the spoon, get the knife, finally a plate. Whoops. Okay, my bad. Lesson learned next time, make two trips. Now everything's on the floor. Hmm, I feel bad. Mom's going to have to clean up. I'm just not going to eat. It's been a long day for everyone. Outside, it's quite dark now, and the crickets have come to life, plaguing the neighborhood with their incessant chirping, creaking, kicking, and missing. And again, no one knows why they're doing it, no one tells them to do it, yet they do it anyway. They just won't shut up. Mom's doing night patrol, and we kill her for one final round. Kimberly is doing okay, the mess is all cleaned up, and the room is neat again. Mom kneels by her bedside and holds in his hand and pray. Every night, the same prayer for each kid, the same routine. Here's how it goes. Now that I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord will serve me. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord will serve me to take. Kimberly looks pretty and peaceful. 
Honestly, she looks much better with her eyes closed. She sleeps so neat. If it were her last sleep, all they had to do was to scoop her into a coffin and she's display ready. Mum leaves her doll there. Kimberly likes sleeping with the doll. Now Jack. Jack, king of the dumpster. The room looks like it's plagued with a poltergeist suffering from ADHD. He even sleeps messy. Mum's removing his earphones, removing books from his bed, almost stripped off a heap of mixed goods. Clothes. Collar. Books. Collar? Is that the neighbor's dogs? Ugh, sleep like a slob. This dude is definitely not coffin ready. Mum's heading to her room now. We don't go into Mum's room at night. She lights smudge sticks to cleanse the room from dark presence. As if dark presence could cause trouble when I'm standing guard. Either way, smoke from the smudge sticks hurts my eyes. So, I'm just gonna say goodnight from the first. Night is over. Let's head back down to the foyer. Under the stairs, opening the cupboard into dark. Thanks for joining me today. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe and support me on Patreon. Good night now.